CoffeeZilla is going to explain to us exactly why the largest banks in the world are starting to fail. Let's get educated and let's do it. Two of the largest bank failures in history right. happened this week. But before we talk about why, I have a question. What's why that? is Jim Cramer so good at being so bad at his job? Who is Just Jim months Kramer? before they both collapsed, he said this. These are never, ever talked about. Why? Because it's too boring? I like to make money. Boring is good. Watch out for Signature Bank. That's my fave. SBB Financial. Don't you want? This company's a merchant bank with a deposit base the Wall Street Administration. All right, all right, all right. But coffee. Do you, can we trust this face? <laughs> Look at this dude. Like this guy's about. a loser. This morning you witnessed the second largest bank failure in American history, <laughs> which naturally created a wave of fear as the day went on. Hello? Bruh. Hence the Dow ultimately losing 345 points, SME falling 1.45%, and the NASDAQ tumbling 1.76%. Now I have to admit, he has a way with sound effects. Now I understand why they call it mad money. But there is one thing Jim Cramer isn't wrong about. What's which that? I know, is shocking. Fear is in the air, and many are worrying is my bank safe? So today I thought we'd break it all down. Hey, listen, man, I, I have M&T Bank, which took over People's United Bank, and they sucked at first. Like, they were terrible, and I don't even really like them that much now. So I'm this is interested why to hear what he's got to say here. A special bailout, why some people are happy with it and others are mad, and, of course, what's next. Let's start with the facts. Okay. Three major banks in the United States have failed. I always really love watching these CoffeeZilla videos because not only are they very informative and like educational, but they also provide like a sense of like, I don't know, I, I trust the guy. So God forbid there's some like massive scandal in the future where CoffeeZilla gets exposed for something. But right now he's a pretty trustworthy guy and I really enjoy the content. So thank you to CoffeeZilla for period that. Period of man. time. Silvergate, Signature Bank, and Silicon Valley Bank. Now, mm. Silvergate was the smallest with about 11 billion in assets. Signature was like the mid-sized one and Silicon Valley Bank was the largest. Now Silvergate right, okay. and Signature Bank were well known in the crypto space while Silicon Valley Bank was massive in the tech startup world. Mm. However, despite their differences, these banks failed for similar reasons at a high level, which is this. They all experienced a run on the banks when too many people demand too much money too fast and the banks don't right. have cash on hand now that makes sense i want to make something clear it would be easy to draw the comparison to the crypto crash in 2022 when several crypto companies like ftx yeah i was gonna i was actually gonna bring that up i was gonna bring up the whole ftx thing that seems to be like the drawback of like every bank type don't you know put your money here or like don't use the banks put your money in this thing like it seems to be the drawback of everything is that like they only really can pay out the money when the demand for the money is less than, you know, however much that they are holding on to because they're using people's money to do like back deals, like like behind behind closed doors deals. And if they lose out on money, then the money they're proclaiming to have isn't even a real number. And, and they still act like they have that much saved up and stuff, which kind of sucks. an important difference. Companies like FTX were insolvent. When there was a run on their banks, they had no money to give. Whereas the banks we're talking about were illiquid, meaning they had the money, but when they had the bank run, some of it was locked up in long-term assets like bonds. Now, to be clear, gotcha. these are not the same things at all, but things can get a little fuzzy in the details. For example, when a bank run happens, what can start as a liquidity problem can become an insolvency problem if the bank has to sell what they have for cash. And let me explain. One okay. of the safest investments- Yeah, because that, that, be that made like no sense to me like whatsoever, to be honest with you. So insolvent is just when they don't have the money, period. But illiquid is when they have the money, but it's locked up in other things, I guess, is the difference. Treasury bonds. Your grandparents probably invest in it. Banks invest in them, both for the same reason. They, they provide a stable rate of return. So right. say your signature bank, right? You've got billions of dollars in customer assets. Where do you put it? Well, into treasury bonds, which let's say earn you 1% a year. You keep some cash on hand for withdrawals, but you figure, look, if I need to sell these, I can sell my bonds, right? Mm -hmm. But what happens if interest rates rise really quickly? Well, suddenly you have this five-year bond you bought a year ago, which gives you 1% a year, but now the government is selling the same five-year bond and offering 5%. 
Because of that, now your bonds value on the open market drops. It's no longer even worth what you paid for it because it's giving less interest than other bonds. And so if you try to sell that, well, now you lose money. Now, gotcha. to be clear, if you held the bond to maturity, well, you would still make that 1% and not lose anything. But when depositors okay. are asking for cash, it's simply not an option to hold on. Now, I know that seems complicated, but the essence of it is this. Banks were forced to sell long-term assets that they didn't want to sell, like bonds, and they took losses because of these bank runs. Because of that, what started as a liquidity Jesus. crisis became an insolvency crisis, and that's why they got shut down, because they weren't going to be able to service all those withdrawals. So now what, right? Does Okay, so, so hey, that's crazy, man. Let me move this. I stopped exactly at 420. That's hilarious. Um, but so essentially bonds like are technically a good idea then is what i'm getting and, and if there's anybody who's like really knowledgeable about this stuff please do not feel afraid to comment and, and educate me i am not over prideful or anything i don't act or pretend like i know everything but so bonds are still a good idea to invest in then like because at the end of the day if you do just hold on to the bond for the period that you agree to hold on to it you will still get the percentage that you bought it at it's just that at any time the government can start selling bonds at different yields different percentage yields and that makes your bond change in value technically because now there are other higher yield uh, valued bonds available to people so when you try to sell your bond which is only yielding at like let's say one percent people are going to say no because they already can buy bonds that are yielding a five percent right is that is that the gist essentially i'm gonna i'm gonna assume that i got it there Not but if i'm wrong let me know weren't going to be able to service all those withdrawals so now what, right? Doesn't the government guarantee bank deposits? Why are we even talking about this? Well, they kind of do. The FDIC insures up to $250,000 per account. However, Ooh. at places like Silicon Valley Bank, they had a lot of accounts with a lot more than that. Because right. as we spoke of, they hosted a lot of venture capital startups that might have had anywhere from 10 to $50 million God, in it. And suddenly that company, which was healthy yesterday, now can't get access to that money and can't meet payroll because their bank had failed. And this triggered a huge response oh. from many in Silicon Valley to call for depositors to have their money guaranteed. With people like Jason Calacanis saying, you should be absolutely terrified right now. That is the proper reaction to a bank run and contagion. Guarantee all deposits up to $10 million or this will spiral into chaos. Okay, so like if a cut, so the the maximum amount guaranteed is 250,000. So for instance, like we saw, what was it, Roblox, I think they, they showed here. Um, let me find it. Roblox like has 150 million in Silicon Valley Bank. If they tried to pull out all of their 150 million there and they, so let's say Silicon Valley Bank didn't have it, they're only protected by the FDIC for up to 250,000 of that. That's fucking bizarre. I apologize for my language, but that's crazy. Let me move my mic back a little bit here. That is bizarre. Like, I would be horrified if I was one of these companies, dude. Screw that. That sounds crazy. L Wi Fi here? L Wi Fi? That's cool, though. It's up oh, to $10 million, you. or this will spiral into what chaos. Is, what is and this? comments like this a bank run and contagion guarantee all deposits up to 10 million dollars or this will spiral into chaos and comments like this sparked a huge debate on whether the government should or would get involved ultimately with the answer coming on sunday when the u.s treasury said this quote depositors will have access to all of their money and there oh, you have nice. it. the u.s government is stepping in to save not only silicon valley bank but also signature bank as well oh, they nice. did this citing a systemic risk exception which really boils down to a single idea uh please don't panic guys please don't <laughs> don't take out your money ultimately the u.s government doesn't want you worried about your bank deposits they however shouldn't. not everyone saw this as a win many were quick to point out that once again the government only seems to step in to help a certain type of person quote oh, yeah. mark cuban bail out silicon valley bank tonight feds approved Goldman Sachs needs 824 billion. Approved. JP Morgan Chase needs 416 billion. Approved. Average Joe, my wife has cancer. Can we get Medicare? We're broke. 
Now, I do have to tell you that those in favor of the Fed's actions will tell you that this is an unfair characterization, that it's not the super rich getting bailed out. Yeah, that, I mean, that's going to be the assumption, though. It's like if you see out of nowhere, like really wealthy and large big name companies asking for assistance and all of a sudden the, you know, the, the federal government is rushing to help. Whereas the average American can ask for like universal health care and stuff and they're not doing so. You got to understand that like the the financial collapse that could come as a result of these big name companies losing out here is, I think, a bigger threat than you would say that. I know it's kind of sad, but then it's a bigger threat to them than you would say the average Joe complaining is because we can't rally together enough people to actually get the Fed worried about anything which sucks. We should be able to come together, but we're not, unfortunately. They'll point out that this isn't a traditional bailout at all because it only applies to the depositors and that executives and shareholders will get nothing. And that sounds good, except for the fact that some executives and shareholders in Silicon Valley Bank had already cashed out mm. with Greg Becker, the CEO, selling $3.6 million worth of his shares right before their collapse. And this gets even worse when you consider that Greg Becker was one of the people who lobbied to deregulate his own bank. According to Heather Landy of Quartz, quote, the ability of these banks to fly under the radar in the U.S. was no accident. Greg Becker, SVB's CEO, lobbied U.S. officials several years ago to raise the asset threshold at which banks would be considered systemically important. Damn. So let's get this straight. They faced less regulatory scrutiny because they weren't systemically important, according to them. But when everything goes wrong, they're systemically risky and must be bailed out. It's a classic case of wanting it both ways. Now, again, this isn't the- I mean, unfortunately, the rich get it both ways, man. I'm not saying this to Coffeezilla because obviously he's way more advanced and smart on this topic than I am. But just for like the average viewer, the, the rich, they, they get it both ways. They know how to play the card in their favor. I mean, the that's same not as the full news bailouts to we saw in 2008. And regardless of whether you land on whether there should have been or should not have been a bailout, the idea that systemically risky banks should get special treatment and regular banks, I guess, don't, sends a pretty clear signal. If you're rich, you should move your money into banks that are too big to fail. Otherwise, you run a systemic risk of ending up on Jim Cramer, feeling like this. <laughs> Again, another phenomenal video by CoffeeZilla there. If you are more knowledgeable of this topic and you have a good grasp of exactly what is happening in terms of the banks collapsing and everything, feel free to comment in the comment section down below and just update me, educate me on whatever you'd like. Um, I'm always, always, always willing to learn more. So let me know. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, wait, 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 wait. Actually, if you'd like to support the channel a little bit more, check out the description. There'll be a link not only to my Cash App, but also to my um, Patreon. If you'd like to go ahead and check out my Patreon, do that, where you can get access to a 10-minute call, get access to helping me build my Discord, depending on which you choose to subscribe to. Until next time, until the next video, Dreamers, out.